In this video, we are going to go through what is hyperinflation, how is it affecting you as a real estate investor, how is it affecting me as a real estate investor. Make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I'm going to get really detailed about how you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars by watching this entire video and how millions of dollars are being made right now because of guys who are taking advantage of what I'm about ready to tell you right now. But before we get into it, would you do me a huge favor? We're trying to make that YouTube algorithm just go off the freaking reservation, would you smash that like button, hit the notification button, hit a subscribe, share it with a friend. I guarantee you something good's gonna happen to you today. What is hyperinflation, right? You've heard about it. It's been happening through the country for the last, I don't know, seven months. Sound about right? Right. Since the election ended, hyperinflation has happened, but it was happening prior to that. And why did it happen? And why has it happened in the past? It's simple. It's abundance of supply of money has been put in the local market. And that means the supply of money is up. The demand is up. And that means the prices have gone up. So we may have seen it at the pump right now, right? The price of gas is like $3.69. It's like five bucks here. It's four bucks here. It's getting really expensive to fill up your car. And then we also saw it with lumber. If you haven't seen our video on lumber prices, check it out. It's a great video. But if you haven't paid attention to that, average cost of a new house to build is up to $24,000 more than it was last year. So what does that mean for guys like me? We're making more money flat out. We are making more money, not new home builders, but guys who are flipping, the cost of the houses are going up. Every single flipper that I know right now is making more money than they projected because they didn't project it to sell for as much as it's selling for. Really giving you a sneak peek about how you can really capitalize on this. Let's get into what hyperinflation does for the average American, how it may be affecting you and your family, but how you can hedge your bets against it and profit out in the end and you don't have to be taken advantage of it and be a victim of it. So this affects the people who deserve it the worst, okay? If you are on a fixed income, if you're on social security, if you're on some sort of disability and the price of peanut butter has gone up to six bucks a jug and you spend a third of your money on food and it's gone up to now it's 50% of your food or 60% of your food, guess what happens? You're one step away from being homeless. So this is something that we need to take serious. And if you care about causes like that, if you learn how to leverage it and make more money in it, then you can actually donate and start helping save people. So don't think just because inflation is a bad thing for a lot of people, it doesn't mean that you can't turn a negative into a positive and benefit from it and help others because of it. it. What is gonna happen because of inflation? Well, inflation is gonna correct itself and then it's going to have a new new. First of all, if you are poor, I am sorry, it sucks and I've been there. I know what it feels like to be broke and I know what it feels like to have no money and then I know what it feels like to owe lots of money. So it's a real deal problem that I understand, okay? But you can change that situation by understanding things and getting out of your situation today. So this affects people where they might be selling their cars, they might have to reduce travel, they might have to reduce the amount of food they eat, it affects people at big time level. And it's something that you really gotta understand because it's not like the cost of goods has only gone up, but wages have not. And now they're trying to force that, but at the end of the day, you can't control the market as much as you think you can. One of the things that most people change during inflation is their discretionary spending, which means that things that are choices should go right out the window because they got to go on their needs only. So now I'm going to get into how it affects real estate investors. First of all, it could be negative or positive depending on which way the pendulum is swinging. Hyperinflation drives interest rates up, then guess what's going to happen? Prices of homes are going to go down. But in this specific example of what we're going through right now, interest rates are low, the supply of money is abundant, 
and the prices of houses are going up. So right now, most guys who are investing in real estate are making an unprecedented return because they might have budgeted to make $300,000 and then that house just sold for $330,000. So now they're making $30,000 more than they projected. Hyperinflation is going to be different this time than it was last time. So we don't really know what's gonna happen, but in the past, it has driven up interest rates and it has collapsed entire currencies. When you have hyperinflation, the value of cash goes down. Your cash is worth less in your pocket today than it was yesterday, meaning that it has less spending power. If you're in a hyperinflation area, interest rates are rising, your spending power is limited, and the price of houses are increasing. What are we in right now? Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? One, another good thing as a real estate investor, I can tell you right now is rents are being gone up everywhere. If gas is going up, rents are going up. And that's one thing that you can count on. If there's a big supply of money, everything is going up. Everybody has to justify their pain at the pump. A landlord's gotta pay more money at the pump, that tenant's gonna pay more money to rent that property from that landlord. Everybody's passing the buck. Here's what I can tell you. If we do go through a hyperinflation period where interest rates do rise, then we're gonna be in chartered territories that we've been before. It's called the savings and loan crisis. It happened in the 80s, right? Late 70s, early 80s, okay? I wasn't around for it uh, where I was, but I wasn't paying attention because I was in diapers. What it was, was basically interest rates were so high, like 18 or 20%, and that meant that people just figured out a different way to sell their property and nobody was out there buying new houses. Houses. So things will adjust, but if we go through a hyperinflation period like that again, watch for values to drop through the floor. Because let's think about it. If you got interest rate of 3%, and then you got an interest rate of 4%, let's say that interest rate goes up to 8%. You have no spending power. We are a credit-driven society and everything is based on your ability to borrow. A lot of potential negatives on inflation, if the interest rates go high, then everything is gonna become more expensive. Banks might tighten up. If banks tighten up, guess what happens? I've seen it happen before. I saw it happen during COVID. They stop lending out money. If the supply of money goes down, rates go up. Hyperinflation is something that you have to be aware of and you have to subscribe to our YouTube channel because you've watched the video this far and you like it. So subscribe, hit the notification button, share it with a friend. We appreciate it. It helps the YouTube algorithm go nicely. Obviously, other things that are negatively impacted for real estate investors during hyperinflation is vacation rentals. People who are choosing to cut back on their budget because they're paying at the pump, they're paying more for rent, they're paying everything, they're not traveling. So if you're a big vacation rental owner like me, guess what? That's going down. Everybody's discretionary spendings going down. So if you have a business that's a hotel, if you have any sort of leisure services, you might be going out of business. So traditionally, real estate is driven by location, demand, and the amount of money that's in supply. But just like anything, you're gonna encounter choppy waters in real estate. So obviously, if people can't buy their houses because interest rates go up, then the price of rentals is going to go up because there's gonna be more demand. So really understanding inflation is understanding supply and demand. We like to call it economics. And if you're following traditional stocks and investments like real estate investment trusts, they're going to follow the market averages. So it's a hedge against inflation. You need to invest in real estate. This is the best thing to hold during an inflationary time. Why? Because if you are going to sell your property, why not sell it when it's increased in value? My current home prior to COVID was worth $800,000. Right now, it's worth 1.1. It's just the market. Nothing changed. The house didn't suddenly get better, it's inflation. Cars have gone up in value. Cars that you bought two years ago, you can sell for the same price that you own today. Real estate has gone through the freaking roof, okay? So if you are investing in real estate, it's an excellent hedge against inflation because by the time it runs out, your value has gone up so high that you've been able to make money while other people are barely getting by. So basically three things are happening here that you can really take advantage of. Properties are going up in value, 
rents are going up and you get to depreciate the asset. Real assets have intrinsic value. They are tangible. What are we talking about? A house has a replacement value. If real estate goes down to zero, you can still rent it out. And if inflation is high, rents are gonna be high. So if the value of it goes down, you still have something to do with it. If the value of a stock goes down, guess what? You're out of money. And breaking it down really well for you, financial assets are a claim for something. Real property, real assets are things that you actually owned. We could break it down like a toy could be an asset, right? You could sell it for something, but really for these specific purposes, we're referring to real estate because we don't talk about assets that don't make you money that you can't depreciate. We're talking about real estate and we're talking about financial tools and measurements, which we're not investing in because they're not a good hedge against inflation. Good hedges have a few key elements. Let's go through what those elements are and how they benefit you. One key hedge is that they hold their value and they don't lose value. Eggs and cars lose value. Generally, when you drive the car off the lot, it's worth like 30% less. If you hold an egg in your fridge and you don't eat it, it's rotten, so they lose value the longer you hold them. Real estate tends to go up in value the longer you hold it and down in value on paper. Another reason why these are good hedges is that it's easy to sell. If you can get Get rid of it easy it's a good hedge against something another key element is that it's divisible like can you sell parts of it real estate is not the best example of this but when we're talking about you can obviously sell your share of an llc you can sell partial ownership it is a liquid investment that you can divide into parts it's probably not the best part of that real estate asset but it's something that you could sell listen you could subdivide your land and sell a parcel so there's lots of ways to divide it, but not traditionally like houses and stuff like that. But if you had an office building and you need to condo it out and sell those, you could divide it and sell it. And the last key element is that it's financeable. If you can't get borrowing money to it, then you're not gonna have a chance of selling it. People that are only gonna be able to pay cash for things, generally gonna be the lowest cost of things. The minute you're able to finance something, the value goes skyrockets. Why a good hedge having a key element of it being financeable is so important is you're gonna make more money because more people can buy it. If you have a limited pool of buyers that are just cash buyers, that's not a good thing. Right now, I could never be happier as a real estate investor. I know that I have all of the wind at my back. I don't care what happens with the stock market. I don't care about any of it. Every flip that I'm doing right now, I'm making more money than I ever thought I would. So what am I doing? I'm buying more, okay? It's a clear and favorite choice. If you're gonna hedge against inflation, buy real estate, and if you're gonna hedge against yourself, make sure you subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit the notification button, and make sure you comment below. If you wanna see a video that we haven't made, give us a mention and share us with a friend. Peace.